Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Jessica, and today I'm doing the week 8 of the pantry challenge. Um, it was delayed because of the ice storm last week, so um, all the footage was actually before the ice storm, but this is actually after the ice storm. So, And you can't even tell, besides all the broken branches, that we had anything. Today is like sunny and like it's supposed to get up to like 50. Crazy! <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys enjoy my videos, go ahead and hit the thumbs up button and please subscribe and hit the bell notification so you don't miss any more videos. Let's get going. For breakfast this morning, I am making some homemade French toast. Now, I took three eggs and a little bit of milk and I scrambled them together. Then I took some of the homemade bread that I got out of the freezer last week, sliced it up, and I'm soaking the bread in the egg mixture. Because the bread is much thicker than what I do, I am soaking it for a little bit longer. Then I'm placing it onto my griddle that I put butter on top of. Then once I have them on the griddle, I am sprinkling a little bit of cinnamon on each, on just the one side to make it nice and delicious. To go with breakfast, I am doing some breakfast links from the freezer. I'm just going to cook these up in the fridge. Okay. Now, because this bread is thicker than I normally do, I have to flip it more to get, make sure that inside is nice and done. Otherwise, you'll have a hard outside and a soft inside. So. I actually made up two packages of little sausages. These everybody's home, and I decided in the drippings, I'm going to fry some eggs. So, that's what we're working on now. And I put the French toast in the oven to keep cool while I'm waiting for everything else to cook. For lunch, I'm making some French, some of the herb bread. And I also parled out two chunks of the broccoli soup, the generic that's similar to the Panera bread, and I got that in the crock pot. Alright, one loaf is done. Yeah, it kind of indented, but it's still, still going to taste fine. And the soup is all ready to go. So we'll get eating. Okay, guys, I am going to be making some banana bread. Um, I was given a bunch of bananas by my father-in-law. Kids ate a lot of them, but a lot of them are ready to go. So I'm going to make a bunch of banana bread and then hopefully I'm going to make enough that I can stick them in the freezer. And so I need one cup of mashed banana, so that roughly equals about three. So we'll see how many we get. This is just half of the stack of bananas i got to work through. So. Now, I have made banana bread multiple times, so I will just post below the recipe um, and the link to the actual full in-depth video. Um, unfortunately, this time, even though I made so many loaves, I did not actually end up freezing any of it because we kids ate it all. All right, now I got enough to make four loaves of bread. <laughs> um... I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to take out half of it and I'm going to set it aside and then I'll make up the first two and then I'll, my, my mixer will definitely will not handle four loaves. All right, and here's the finished product. Okay, I am going to be doing a lot of cooking today, the bacon and, and the Christian stuff, so I'm getting supper ready in the crock pot. Um... What I did was I scrubbed and diced a bunch of pages, put those on the bottom. Um, I put some carrots on top. My father-in-law, um, along with bananas, gave us a bunch, of, gave us a giant bag of carrots. Um, apparently he had a saw sale and he bought several things that he gave us. So that was one of them. And also, there's my pot roast. And... I chopped up an onion, and I'm going to put that kind of in there just to flavor stuff. And pour some water. 
Oh, that is, oh well. All right, I'm going to stick this lid on, and I'm going to cook it on high most of the day. Okay, got a bunch of bowls out. First, before I get started, I'm going to stick my butter and my cream cheese in my hot water so they can get softened. Okay, for my own recipe, I need one cup of butter. And then, well, eight ounces of cream cheese. We're going to stick those in here. While I'm getting the other stuff that I want to make ready. They can... Okay. Now, I want to try and make the gnome need bread. That's a bowl of other thing. Okay. That... Uh, frugal Fit Mom makes. I will link her recipe in that video below. So I'm just going to try and put everything in the bowl like she says to do. So we'll see how that works. next dough that I'm going to make is a bagel dough that I found online that I wanted to try. Now I'm adding my warm water, my sugar, and my yeast. I am not stirring it at this time and I'm going to let it sit for five minutes to activate. I'm going to try the oatmeal raisin or cinnamon raisin bagels. So I got some raisins on here and I'm boiling them just like I do with my grandma's cookies like I did last week. And I'm going to use some of this water to add because you have to. Since I have to wait for my raisins and my yeast to get done, what I decided to do was mix up the dry ingredients, which is three and a half cups of bread flour and one and a half teaspoons of salt. Now, since I wanted to do cinnamon raisin bagels, I decided to add some cinnamon to the dry mix. Now I went with one and a half teaspoons of cinnamon just because that is roughly how much I had to add to my grandmother's cookies and that um, is the same, roughly the same amount of flour. So that's how I kind of basically came up with that amount. Now since my raisins are done, I poured that warm water or hot water into my cold water to make the correct temperature of water. Then I poured my remaining, my raisins, and I used about half a cup of raisins is how much I used. And then I mix, finally was able to mix my yeast, and I just kept mixing up the ingredients. I added the rest of the water that it said to add, and um, you may have to add some additional water depending on how dry it is after you get everything in. I got it all mixed in now I'm just kneading and you want to knead it until for about 10 minutes or until it's elastic or it's it, nice and smooth I guess is the way to describe it Bad boy, here he is. Nice and smooth. I got a grease pan here. I'm just gonna flip him, flip him, and then I'm gonna let him sit, cover him, and let him sit for several hours, and I'll deal with him later. The next item I'm making is some homemade granola from LumineOnDime.com. I will post the recipe below um, and a link to their page. Now, in a saucepan, I am putting 
some brown sugar, honey, and some vegetable oil. Then I'm going to cook it. I decided to make some yogurt parfaits because the last thing our father, my father-in-law gave us was a very small batch of fresh fruit. Then in a cake pan, while that's cooking, I need five cups of oatmeal. Which is cooking. One, two, oh, need to fill up my container. Yeah, that took a lot longer to fill up my container than I thought. I had trouble getting into my, my stock bucket. <laughs> and then I'm just adding the cinnamon and some salt and mixing it all up with George's help, of course. Then what I'm going to do is pour the sugar mixture, honey mixture over top, and I'm just going to stir well, and then I'm going to bake it in the oven. This next recipe, I'm going to be making some mini cherry turnovers. I love these because they are so easy to make. So what I am doing is in a bowl, I am taking one cup of butter softened and one package of cream cheese that I also softened in the water. And then I'm going to be taking one third cup of powdered sugar and I'm going to get that mixed nice and smooth. And then when you are done mixing, you're going to have to hand knead and then let it sit in the fridge for an hour. Okay, there is my granola. I'm supposed to just let it cool in the pan. That's what I'm going to do. I did stir it twice during the 10 minutes. And so I'm just going to let that sit. And I'm just going to get my dishes done while I'm waiting for everything else to get done. All right. This is nice and cool. I guess you can add raisins, but... I am not going to because I have, while cleaning up my refrigerator, I found I had a lot of yogurt. It's a little past, but I'm still going to eat it. So, I'm going to have some, a couple days this week, I'm going to have some yogurt parfaits. <laughs> now, I'm going to get this into an airtight container. Fucking it when you need it. It is really good. Now we are back to the mini cherry turnovers. Now, it has been chilling in the refrigerator, and so I'm going to roll it out. And I'm rolling it out in between two pieces of wax paper. Now, the first time I did it, I did not sprinkle some powdered sugar on the wax paper on both sides. And it ended up ripping the wax paper and not coming off at all. So use some powdered sugar on both sides, and it'll make your life so much easier. Then I'm taking a cup, and I'm going to cut in my circles. pie filling from last week that I did not use. So, it's going to take a little bit. Put it in the center. Then I'm going to take some warm water and I am going to press it around the edge and then I'm going to seal it tight.
All right, they are ready to go in the oven. Um, 375 for 18 minutes or so. All right, also while cleaning out, the, I found some of this. Sorry, but it needs to get processed because it's about ready to go bad. So I'm just going to get it cut up, washed up, and stuck in the freezer for another date. See, it's kind of... Now since I had my cutting board out, I went ahead and looked through my onions and I found several red onions that were going bad. So I went ahead and I chopped those up and stuck them in a freezer bag as well. I had to stop every few onions to wash my eyes out because I was crying so bad. There they are. That's what they're supposed to look like. This is actually the second batch. Pick these up. There's my first batch. It's, they're kind of burnt, but they still taste really good. All right. Now I got my, this morning stuff done, and I've got to wait till this evening until my my bread finished rising, so I can finish that. I got some apple cider from the freezer. And stuck it in our little, whatever thing it's called, for thing. And then I'm going to work on my bagels. Okay. Since I'm waiting for stuff to rest, I'm starting to boil my water for the bagels. Now, it has risen the first rise, and then I'm going to punch it down. Oop. George kind of already did, so. And then I'm supposed to let it rest for 10 minutes. Okay, now, because I'm afraid it's going to stick, I'm going to power some thing. Now what I am doing is just cutting it into eight equal portions. And you can use a scale, but I just eyeballed it. And then you're just going to roll it into a smooth ball, either like that or just like that, whatever works best for you. Press them down flat. <sighs> they all look about the same size. Okay, and I'm going to let them sit for 10 more minutes. And you're just going to want to form a hole in the center to make the nice ring. As you can see, my water is boiling. Now I got a slotted spoon here. 
I'm going to take these and I'm just going to drop one at a time. I'll see how it works. Ooh, maybe. Yeah, kind of pluck him in there. Well, he's supposed to float to the surface, but he didn't sink. <laughs> Uh-oh, we're supposed to cook him about two minutes. We'll see how this goes. <laughs> I boiled the bagels two minutes on each side and they did float up a little bit, so there was a difference. bagel is in. Got my pan grease. Here is what they look like. Nice and poofy. So I'm going to transfer all these over to my grease pan. They're all done. Now I'm going to get them in the oven and bake them for 20-25 minutes at 425. My crusty bread is done rising so I greased a pan because I don't have parchment paper. I'm going to dump it, hopefully, in here. Maybe get in there. There we go. I dumped it in, and I'm going to let it rise again for 30 more minutes. You know, I pulled my bagels out of the oven. I actually want to try these bad boys. Let me cut one open and put some butter on it. Yeah, get in here. Mm, that's so good. I like this one. Definitely gonna make this one again. Okay, now that I got that butt risen, I'm gonna put the other one on top. Hope I better wipe off the crusty bread for the week. We'll see how it tastes. We gotta wait. Let it cool for at least, I think it said 30 minutes to an hour. So we'll let it cool and then we'll taste it and see what it, it tastes like. All right, my pot roast is done. You can see it's just like falling right off. And I'm just gonna scoop up some carrots. Put some onion in there. Potatoes. And there's supper right there. No more carrots. You need some more carrots. Yum yum yum. Oh there we go. Nice and good. Mash up potatoes, add a little butter, and call it a good. For breakfast this morning, I just sliced open one of the bagels, and I'm going to put some butter on it. And that's what we're going to have for breakfast. All right, here is the yogurt that I found in my... And it is inspired by... Oh, can you even see that? Nope. It's by a couple weeks, but it's been unopened. It's been in the fridge. And it smells fine. Looks fine. So I'm going to try it. And there's the bag of fruit. So I'm just going to whip it all together. And The yogurt tasted fine just as well. Um, so I sprinkled some fruit on top of the yogurt. And then added some granola. And that was breakfast for several days. Then for lunch for several days. We actually sprayed a piece of aluminum foil. Added a tortilla. Then topped with some pot roast and some cheese and baked in the oven at 400 degrees for about 20 minutes or so until so it was all nice and gooey. Then for another breakfast, George was craving some fried eggs, so I fried him up some eggs. And then we had some yogurt on the side with some of our crusty bread, and that's what me and George ate. Then for another breakfast for the week, um, I made up the rest of the package of pancake mix and made a bunch of pancakes for everybody.
Alright, in preparation for lunch, I am cooking up some Italian sausage. Alright, there is the final product. Did a yogurt parfait. Pancakes with some apple butter. Alright, the sausage is done. I'm going to put that in the bowl and put it in the fridge until lunchtime. For supper, I'm going to make some chicken and macaroni casserole. I actually got this recipe from a friend. And so in each baking dish, uh, I am putting some cream of turkey that from the freezer. And it's still partially frozen, so I will have to, it'll sit all day and then thaw. And then one, I am putting two cups of cooked ham that was in the freezer. And the other one was just a can of, of chicken. Then I am adding two cups of macaroni, uncooked macaroni noodles in each pan. Then I'm sprinkling some dried chopped onions into, and I'm adding two cups of milk in each one. And I also used up the rest of the shelf-stable milk that I opened last week because I ran out of milk. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to sprinkle some cheese on each one, and I'm going to let it sit in the refrigerator for five to six hours, or you can do it overnight, and it tastes now you do want to stir it up, but since my tur cream of chicken or turkey is partially thawed, I'll have to do that later in the day. For lunch, I am mixing up some pizza crust, some two ingredient pizza crust from Living on a Dime. I will post the recipe below. I love it because all it is is two ingredients, or in this case it's four ingredients because I don't have self-rising flour. It All it is is Greek yogurt and self-rising flour. Or in this case, it's flour and salt and baking powder. Um, but I will have all that information down below. And so I'm just mixing it up and then I'll stick it in the fridge for lunchtime. Okay, I divided up the pizza into six pieces for me and the kids that are here. And I'm just going to pre-bake it for a few minutes in the oven for about four minutes. Okay, it has been pre-baked. And then what I did is take a jar of home canned pizza sauce and I'm just spreading it onto each pizza. And then I sprinkled a little bit of the fake parmesan cheese onto each one and then topped it and then I let the kids add the toppings of what they wanted um most of them we just sprinkle cheese and then there some kids added a little bit extra cheese and then I found a package of small pepperonis in the that some of the kids added pepperonis and then the Italian sausage that I made the morning off and then I everyone just... had their own pizza all right there's the final Kids masterpiece. All right, there they are. And Dalton made some cranberry juice from the pantry. So there we go. We added some lettuce inside. And here is the macaroni casserole. And we had leftovers throughout the week and all that. We'll see you next week. You guys have a good week and God bless. Bye.